drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So we will have three talks today. I want to talk about the headaches and the treatment and the temporal mandibular jaw or the jaw pain after COVID or during COVID and the possible managements. And then the second talk, we'll look into the Omicron in Washington state and the data that they have released today. I think it's fascinating data. And then the third talk is going to be my status. So please hang in there with me and let's do it. So I'm going to share my screen. So this is drbean.com. This is a decent article uh, in Yahoo Life about the headaches. So I've marked some parts. This is British Medical Journal, and they are talking about the Zoe app. And the symptom sets that they are seeing in the Zoe app are runny nose, headache, fatigue, then sneezing and sore throat. Although the British government still says fever, cough, and loss of smell and taste. So these are not really uh, found much in Omicron time. So that is an interesting uh, data here as well. This is a good reference. Uh, check it out. Then this is the Washington State data. I have taken some headache data from here. This is about temporomandibular joint. There are three uh, references here that we will discuss as well. So with this, let's start. So I have no disclosure. This is my painting that I did over the new year. So this was happy new year painting. We are still living in Omicron time. This is a medical disclaimer. The, the discussion here is not a, a medical advice. There is no patient doctor relationship here. This is more of a knowledge and information sharing. So headaches and jaw pain. So why exactly Omicron causes headaches and what do you know about treating them? So the runny nose, headache, fatigue are the most common Omicron symptoms at this time. Runny nose. So when I had the COVID, which I still have it, I had runny nose and I had some, some sneezing. I was a tiny bit tired and I did not have headache except a couple of days at night. I felt I have headache and I was, I was surprised that I usually don't get headaches. Why do I have headache? But I never had fever. I never had muscle aches and I didn't, did not have loss of taste or smell. Now, this is Washington State data. We will go over this whole document after this lecture. But here, if you see headache, so I'm here at this column, variant of concern, where it says headache and it is too small. So ignore reading it. We'll go over this in the next talk. But just hear me out that it says headache was 54% in Delta. And that was the top. Delta's top complaint was headache. And Omicron's, one of the top complaints is headache. So Omicron's top complaints are, if you see here, this is Washington state, not UK. Washington state's top sore throat, cough, and headache are the top symptoms for Omicron. Fever, muscle aches are then afterwards. And that is a shift from Delta. If you see Delta's top was headache, but then 49% fever and muscle ache. So, so headache plus fever plus muscle ache was Delta, while headache, sore throat, and runny nose is Omicron. So I was on the right page. So now, what are the types of headache? Of course, there are many types of headaches, correct? So there is headache on the back, there is headache on the front, there is headache on the side. There can actually be headache on the top as well. There can be diffused headache too. So headaches have many types and many, many reasons. For the COVID, the headache causes are basically two that we can think about. One of them is the inflammation. Because SARS-CoV-2 causes generalized inflammation, why does it cause generalized inflammation? Because wherever the SARS-CoV-2 is, that is where the inflammation is occurring, but those cytokines 
are actually going around in the whole body and that can cause inflammation in other parts as well. This is very common headache, is very common with viral infections, although with Omicron, headache and sore throat and runny nose is becoming more and more common. To me, this is funny that when I look at my own symptoms, it seemed like even throat was not very much involved. So it has gone so much up. It's a funny thing that it is now in nose and ears. My ears have tinnitus and a feeling of congestion and my nose has a feeling of congestion. My throat had a problem for a few days and gone and I have nothing almost for the lower respiratory tract. And I wish that it just continues to become better. So inflammatory state of our body is an important aspect and headache can become part of that symptom set. The second is sinusitis. Omicron is causing sinusitis. And this is why you would see that many times patient would say that I have clear runny nose or whitish material which is not yellow. Yellow is an indication of bacterial infection. So it is able to start infecting the sinuses and the mucosa of the, the lining of the sinuses as well. And so that would cause headache. And the classic sign will be that when the patient wakes up in the morning, especially the frontal headache, when they wake up in the morning, they have headache. And as they become upright and the, the frontal sinus starts draining, their headache would start improving. There can be headache on the sides of the nose as well, the paranasal sinuses. So if I go to the next one over here. So these are the sinuses here. Um, there is frontal sinuses. There are ethmoidal cells and sinuses. and then there are the maxillary sinuses. These sinuses can also become tender. So one can actually tap on the sinus and feel the pain as well. So these are the um, possible reasons. There can be more reasons. For example, de dehydration can cause headache. For example, electrolyte imbalances can cause headache. For example, the stress of the disease that I got Omicron, I got COVID, and then having this muscle, the temporalis muscle, this muscle tensed up with stress is going to cause a headache as well. So there are many, many factors that can cause headache. There can be congestion, the vascular system inflamed and causing congestion and that can cause headache too. Many factors, but these are more common ones. That is the inflammatory state and the congestion of the sinuses. Now, how do we manage that? So let me go to the management first, then I'm going to go back to the temporomandibular jaw. So the management is really just over the counter. The acetaminophen or Tylenol can be taken, plenty of fluids. Electrolyte balance is very important. Sometimes just drinking plain water is not sufficient because plain water, here you drink it, and if it is a little cold, in a few minutes to hours, you will pee it out. So that water has just crossed the body, although it took some waste products with it, but it did not stay in the body to provide the fluid volume that we may be needed, or not enough of it stayed in the body. So sometimes in the cases where dehydration is occurring, then electrolyte-based water or water with the salt and sugar added to it can be a more important um, solution than simple plain water. Now, if um, acetaminophen or Tylenol doesn't work, then ibuprofen can be taken. Decongestants can be taken. So if again, if you think about it, painkillers is one. And if the sinuses are the problem, then decongestant can be taken. Steam can be helpful. And there are many other such remedies as well. And this is why the sinus headache can become aggravated near the morning. So this is the discussion of the headache. Now the temporomandibular jaw. Temporomandibular jaw is a pain. Is really our jaw is attached here with the, with the skull and jaw articulates here at the temporomandibular jaw. Now temporomandibular jaw can, it's actually a good strong joint. And there is this masseter muscle over here that is also one of the strongest muscle in the body and can produce a lot of uh, um, stress and strain or power, whatever are the metrics for that. However, 
temporomandibular jaw can become misaligned, that misalignment can be because of mouth breathing. So when nose is congested and a patient is not able to breathe correctly from the nose, and I felt it when I was taking my uh, midday naps a few days ago, I will not be able to breathe from my nose. And I would have to keep my mouth open and breathe. And so what would happen is that that can put stress on the temporomandibular joint and that can cause joint pain. Now, there can also be stress because of the stress itself. And what happens is during the stress, we sometimes just clench our teeth. We are unknowingly clenching our teeth. And that can put stress on the temporomandibular jaw, plus that can cause the masseter muscles exertion as well. So then when you're eating food, you might feel that your muscle is getting exhausted. So that is a possibility as well. That is the stress. And now, how do we um, handle this? So let me show you some sites over here for the temporomandibular jaw. The, the basic solution is simple but prolonged. And the simple solution is, number one, it is possible that physiotherapy or physical therapy may help, will help. Painkillers will be useful. In addition to that, hot and cold packs will be useful. And then it is possible that the patient would need even more help than just this much. And bite guard may be needed so they're not stressing out and they're not biting hard and, and causing pain further in the temporomandibular jaw. And there may even be further help in terms of various kind of orthodontic solutions. So if you see here, there was a recent news report that noted how a doctor who recovered. So I'm going to actually just go to that report here. This is the jaw pain Dr. Dietrich experienced is likely due to excessive mouth breathing during his first few months of recovery. He was diagnosed with temporomandibular joint disorder. The TM joint is located where the ear and jaw meet and is often the source source of jaw pain. The, with mouth breathing, it can cause strain on the TM joint. And then if you see here, physical therapist claimed that COVID-19 infections make it difficult to breathe, which forces patients to use muscles in the neck to help them breathe. As a result, the neck muscles that pull the jaw can become strained. So that is another, stress is another. So what are the solutions? So he's wearing a mouth guard to alleviate strain on his temporomandibular jaw because the, uh, the grinding and biting hard will not be occurring or mouth will not close very hard and the joint will not be under stress. The ultimate goal is to rebalance his muscles and eliminate any strain. He can also eat soft foods to help reduce his pain much faster so that he doesn't open the mouth a lot. Then in addition to that, when the temporomandibular jaw pain occurs, this can be accompanied with headaches, verticals, worn teeth, ear pain, and so on. I also wanted to share this as well. Typical treatment for temporomandibular joint dysfunction include physical therapy, hot and cold packs, and a specialized form of dentistry called neuromuscular dentistry. So what is that? Neuromuscular dentistry can be any combination of treatments, including exercises for the jaw, even orthodontics. Another possible treatment is bite guard. So the point is that there are multiple ways that this can be helped. But what is important is that this could be a slightly longer period of time when this comes back to normal. So that is a discussion for these two common outcomes with COVID. I'm going to hang up now and come back and we'll go over the COVID Washington State's Omicron data. After that, we'll talk about my status as well. So thank you very much for being here. Please like, subscribe, and, and share if you, would, if you could. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee, or you can use PayPal, or you can become a patron. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in a few minutes.